All right, uh, let me talk about this uh, ignition system on this outboard. It's uh, simple and complex at the same time. And what I mean by that is the actual main components of the ignition system are uh, basically just this special ignition coil and this module right here called an amplifier assembly. Uh, what this actually is, is this is an early version of the CDI ignition. Uh, CDI stands for capacitor discharge ignition. What happens is you've got uh, 12 volts goes into this box. There's a circuit inside this box that actually boosts the 12 volts up to a higher voltage. That higher voltage is used to charge a capacitor inside this box. Then there's a device in there, more than likely a SCR or silicon controlled rectifier, that when it's triggered by an outside trigger source, it allows that capacitor to rapidly discharge into the primary through this wire here of this uh, ignition coil. That will induce a large voltage on the secondary which makes your spark. So this ignition coil is also special. You can't use a regular ignition coil with this setup because regular ignition coil is designed to see 12 volts on the primary or not 12 volts, but uh, it's designed for a lower primary voltage. So, anyways, um, once that uh, you know, once that's working correctly, that's all fine and dandy. The problem is this module, I think, proved problematic uh, in a lot of the uh, applications that it was used in, and I believe that's why they discontinued it and went to a completely different setup shortly after it was uh, introduced. So it was only used over a few short years, I think late 60s, early 70s. From what I've read online, one of the things that could cause frequent failure of this module would be bad connections to the battery. Um, the other problem with this module is it didn't want to fire if the battery voltage was too low, which you can imagine if you ran your battery down while you were out on the lake and you wanted to start the engine, it wasn't like you would get weak spark with a low battery. You would get no spark. So that was uh, not good. So now we're going to try and uh, attempt to uh, to test this module and find out if it's good. There, uh, This module is no longer available. There is an aftermarket module available by another company, but it's over $250 to purchase it. Um, this module is a sealed unit. It's not made to be taken apart and serviced in any way. This one looks like it was marked July of 99 as being okay. So I wonder if it was already a replacement because I know that that outboard is actually like a 1969 or a 1970. Um, we're going to, if this module ends up testing bad, we're going to open it up to see if we can't see what's inside. Chances are the electronics are going to be all encased in some sort of a potting material that's designed to keep out moisture and uh, to isolate the unit from uh, failure due to vibration. But hey, if it's bad anyways, what's the harm in tearing it open and seeing what's inside? So I'm going to set this aside for a moment and we'll look at the ignition coil. Now the ignition coil, to test the ignition coil, there's a couple of tests you can do um, that are pretty quick tests that are easy to do. And these tests are, they can be um, a good indicator depending on what kind of results you get. So if I go from this blue wire to this black wire, I'll actually be checking the resistance of the primary winding. I already did that uh, and found that it was less than one ohm, which is normal. Now if I had did this test, uh, conducted this test and found that this was infinite resistance or an open circuit, then that's positive proof that the ignition coil winding, primary winding is open. You could stop right there, your ignition coil is bad. The fact that it's not open doesn't necessarily mean that the coil is good, but it's one positive thing going for the coil and you're going in the right direction. The next test I can do, which I haven't done yet, is I can do the secondary winding, which is going to be from the ground wire, because <clears throat> they use the same ground, to the um, high voltage wire. Or the high tension lead, as it's sometimes called. So I'm gonna fire up the ohmmeter, 
and we're going to make sure we've got it on resistance. I've got it set for mega ohms. So now what I've got to do is make sure I've got a good connection. I've got to put the uh, meter down to make sure I'm getting a good connection. All right, I checked and I've got infinite resistance from the high tension lead to the ground, which would tend to indicate an open secondary winding. If I've got an open secondary winding, then the ignition coil's bad. The only thing I'm not sure of is whether or not there's a possibility that the secondary winding resistance is so high that it's out of range for my meter, which I kind of doubt, but it's possible. But right now I'm leaning towards probably an open secondary winding on this coil. Um, that being the case, just for giggles, I'm still going to continue with my testing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically bench test this system together. Since my primary winding is good, I could still maybe get some kind of a reading of output voltage coming out of this unit here. So basically, what I need to do is I need to wire this up to simulate it being in an actual operating environment. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to make sure that the case here, this plate right here, is grounded. So there's actually three wires. The gray wire is a tachometer drive lead, so that just sends a pulse out to the tachometer. The um, black wire right there is actually the trigger wire that goes to your points. And this purple wire right here is your 12 volt supply from the ignition system. So when the ignition key is on, you get 12 volts goes in here. So there's no ground wire. The ground is actually this plate. And this blue wire here is the one that goes over to the primary of the coil. So this is the output of the amplifier. Now I think I read that you're never supposed to try and operate this amplifier with this unplugged. That can cause failure of the amplifier. If that's the case, then an open winding on your primary could also cause your amplifier to go. So you can see right there where there's obviously a design flaw if that is the case because you'd think this should have some way of protecting itself since it's so expensive so that if your winding opens on the coil, you don't have to buy the whole thing. You can just replace the coil. All right. So here's my uh, test setup. I've got a spark plug attached here. Uh, that's my spark gap. I've got the blue wire reconnected. I've got my ground wire grounded to the case with a screw. I'm sending my ground lead back to my 12 volt power supply. And over here I've got my connection. This is going to be my 12 volts. And then this is my trigger. All I need to do to trigger it is touch it to ground and simulate points making and breaking. Now I believe the way this circuit works is unlike conventional points breaker system, uh, points condenser breaker ignitions where when the points open, that's actually what causes the capacitor to then discharge and fire. In this case, I believe what we're looking for is when the points close, that's the trigger to actually cause it to fire. So it's kind of like the opposite. Not kind of like, it is the opposite. So anyways, without further ado, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, shut my power supply off. I've got my power supply, I'm going to set it to 13 volts which would uh, simulate a good strong battery. I'm going to place my uh, meter selector to amps so I can monitor the current draw. I'm going to shut the power supply off. I'm now going to connect my 12 volts. Okay, make sure my lead is proper proximity there and I'm going to energize it. Okay, so now I've got 
voltage going to the amplifier and first thing I'm noticing is that there's no current draw appears whatsoever out of the uh, no current being drawn whatsoever out of the uh, power supply which is not good I would expect to not only see some current draw but might also hear a noise a lot of these early CDI units would uh, be kind of noisy anything coming out of that case. So I'm going to check my voltage level again. It doesn't seem to make any difference as far as the voltage goes. And I'm just going to double check my power supply sure that that's working. This power supply has an automatic overload protection, so make sure I get power coming out of it. I do, if I touch the lead to ground, I basically short out the power supply, my overload protection light comes on, so I know I'm getting power to this thing. So that's interesting, that's not doing anything. Oh, hold on a second. I saw a little bit of a spark when I first fired that up. So my maybe my ammeter on my uh, power supply is not working. The switch is kind of dirty. The reason why I say that is because I'm getting a spark when I first connect this. Either that or maybe low current it draws. I don't know. All right. So now what should happen if this was working correctly is as I rake this across the ground I should get a flurry of sparks at my spark gap I'm getting nothing I messed around with a little bit more now I'm uh, got the meter lead right on the uh, blue wire going to the coil so that would be the output from the amplifier and I'm getting zero volts nothing coming out of this amplifier so, at this point, I'm willing to uh, say that this amplifier module is bad, which I suspected it might be. And furthermore, I may also have a bad ignition coil, I'm not sure. Um, so now, I'm going to disconnect this whole rig.